watching tonight's game, there wasn't a huge amount analysed. We had, I think, nine changes for England, ten changes yeah, for Belgium. What, what were your thoughts on it? Well, there's always something to analyse on it, uh, Nathan, to be quite honest. I, like what I, If I was doing it tonight, I would show, uh, if I had time, to show the difference between England's last match where they had this formation in the midfield in relation to the midfield they had tonight. See, I think there should be continuity. And I think Belgium got much more out of that game tonight. Martinez got much more out of the game than Southgate because I think they played tonight the way the first team plays. And I think they were technically better than England, uh, by the way. But it, in, in, in and England had um, uh, Delph, uh, Dyer and Loftus-Cheek Loftus in the middle of the field. They actually played as midfield players. Now, the first team are not doing that. They're playing totally different. They're playing with one midfielder. They're playing with one midfielder. And you said Lingard and Deli Alli, and we, we were talking about like open front of the ball. Like, I don't know what's going to happen when they play uh, the, the first team because if you get past those, you're going to be at, really at the, and also getting on the ball. So, the, like, the, the, I think when you ha- you're going into a world like a cup like this, you have a formation, you know? And all the players should be in on that formation. So the three lads that played tonight, right, if they're promoted at some stage to the first team, they're going to be playing in a totally different system. So you're not learning anything from it. Whereas I think Belgium... From what I could see of them, were playing in a certain way and very, very good technically as well. I think they were better than England. Uh, I would say one if if and when they go into the first team, that's what they do. So it's, that, uh, that's then to my opinion, that's preparation. Yeah. That's, that's what you do, you know. Uh, but that wasn't the case with England tonight. I mean, they had Dyer in, in the middle of the field, who I'm no fan of at all, and I say Delph and Loftus Cheek as midfield players. Now, Loftus Seek wasn't a very good midfield player. He was getting into some bad position, but that's the position he was picked in, right? So I think when you when see, I think when you're dealing with all the players, Nathan, in practice, say there's two right backs or three right backs, you tell them the same thing as the lads in the team. So when they do come in, it's only common sense when it, that they know what what they have to do and same the left back in the situation. Now, the lads that played tonight, whether it be Delph or anything else, actually played in a way that the first team don't play. So there's no continuity in that. So Belgium definitely got more from, apart from winning the game, I think they got more from it than, than England could possibly get anything. So simple as you pick up an injury in the next game or even when you're thinking about making substitutions, yeah. you're not 100% sure and probably the player isn't 100% sure because he has, he's never actually played in that position alongside those exactly. players. Exactly, that's exactly right. I mean, if, if England at the moment now, say Delph, Delph is left side midfield player, mm. right? They haven't played that in the previous two matches. They've got Henderson and they've got the other lads that we explained before who are forward players. Now, who's going to come in if one of those players are out? Because they're overload. Well, obviously Rashford would come in for Deli Alley, uh, somebody else. But they're all forwards. Yeah. You can't see any of the midfield players coming in for anybody because there hasn't anybody been there before them to come into the, into the, the, the team. 